So let's put these together. If most of the memory formation is happening in late sleep, teenagers, most of them, don't spend a lot of time in that late sleep. So if you and I get a good eight hours of sleep, we're locking down about three and a half hours worth of memory. If a teenager only makes it through three sleep cycles a night because they're not going to bed till late and they're still waking up early, they're gonna do a lot of cleaning, their brain's gonna be fine, they're gonna come in the next day, but they're only gonna get about one and a half hours of memory consolidation. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is A Mechanism for Learning with Sleep Spindles by Peyrosh and Siebert. Now to understand this paper we have to wrap our heads around this idea of plasticity. So you've probably heard this term before, plasticity. Your brain is constantly changing it and what's changing in there is the connections, the synapses, the way the brain communicates. Now plasticity actually comes in two unique flavors. The first is called long-term potentiation. This is when the brain grows more synapses and actually increases its communication and connectivity. The other flavor then is long-term depression. This is when the brain actually reduces and cuts back on synaptic connections, when it talks less. Now, interestingly, when we're awake, just living our lives, like right now, our brain almost exclusively does long-term potentiation. It's constantly growing new networks talking to itself. Now, this actually is a problem, because imagine, if all the brain did was continue to grow and expand, eventually you'd run out of space and this whole thing would just mush in on itself or explode. So how do we combat this? Enter sleep. During sleep, the brain primarily does long-term depression. When you sleep, that's when the brain resets itself, pulls back all these new synapses and equalizes, kind of balances itself out and kind of returns you to normal so you can start again the next day. But here we've got a second problem. If the brain takes away all these synapses when we sleep, how do we ever remember anything? If the brain just keeps resetting itself, where does our memory go? We need some sort of mechanism to keep key memories ideas online. And what's that mechanism? sleep spindles. And welcome to this paper. So this paper takes a look at how the brain holds on to key memories while you're asleep while it's resetting itself. So while you're asleep, your brain is just kind of in this really slow, repetitive pattern. That's the long-term depression. It's just pulling all these synapses back. But every once in a while, your hippocampus, so there's this deep area in your brain right in the middle called the hippocampus, which we call your gateway to memory. If you want to remember anything, that information has to go through your hippocampus. So your gateway to memory every once in a while while you're asleep just starts firing up. It just starts sending out these really sharp waves. It looks like it's awake. And what we think is happening is at these times, the hippocampus is replaying memories from that day, key bits of information you learned. So just like a VCR, it hits rewind, play, rewind, play, and it just keeps replaying these key memories. Now, every time it does that, these waves just ripple out to the edge of the brain and we get these little things called sleep spindles where little spots on the edges of the brain just start to look like they're awake. So the rest of the brain is kind of slow in this, but we get these little spindles where it looks like, ooh, this spot's awake now. Ooh, this spot looks like it's awake. And what we think is happening is that sleep spindle is protecting that little spot of the brain from being pulled back during sleep, long-term depression, so you can hold on to your memory there. So in reality, these little sleep spindles that's our locking down our memories for those days. That is our memory mechanism. If you don't sleep, you don't make memories. So making sure our students recognize that sleep is the key to memory, the more we can get them to start to hopefully take control of their sleep and ensure they get enough sleep every night to make learning stick and help us move forward. Now, there's one more thing with this paper that I wanna share. So when you sleep, you go through what are called sleep cycles. So these are kind of 90 minute windows of sleep each night. So you can assume in like an eight hour night, you're gonna get five of these 90 minute sleep cycles. During each sleep cycle, you move through what's called stage one sleep. This is kind of that light sleep into stage two where you start to get deeper through stage three. This is the deepest sleep. And then you come back up through the cycle and boom, you're out. Now this is important because sleep spindles are locking down our memories only occurs during stage two of sleep. But interestingly, you don't spend the same amount of time in each stage during each cycle. So your first two cycles each night, you spend most of that 90 minutes in deep three. This is when the brain is just washing itself out, long-term depression. This is when it's really resetting itself, rebalancing itself so you can survive the next day. It's not really until cycles three, four, or five that you spend a lot of time in stage two. So this memory consolidation, these sleep spindles, they're really heavily weighted to later sleep. Now, why would this matter? 
Because during adolescence, if you have to work with teenagers, something very interesting happens with sleep. So every human being has what's called their circadian rhythm. It's this kind of 24 hour cycle where we're awake and asleep. And in most human beings, we start to get tired around 8 p.m. We're asleep by 10, deep asleep by one or two, awake by six, and we do it all again the next day. Now, during the teenage years, during adolescence, this sleep cycle, this circadian rhythm shifts. It moves about two to three hours later. So teenagers don't even start to get tired till 10 or 11. They're not into their deepest sleep till four or five, yet most of them still have to get up around six or 7 a.m. to go to school. So let's put these together. If most of the memory formation is happening in late sleep, teenagers, most of them, don't spend a lot of time in that late sleep. So if you and I get a good eight hours of sleep, we're locking down about three and a half hours worth of memory. If a teenager only makes it through three sleep cycles a night because they're not going to bed till late and they're still waking up early, they're gonna do a lot of cleaning, their brain's gonna be fine, they're gonna come in the next day, but they're only gonna get about one and a half hours of memory consolidation. So during adolescence, because the sleep cycle naturally shifts, if we continue to wake kids up at an early time, we can expect their memory to decrease. And I'm sure a lot of you recognize this, is during the teenage years, a lot of kids' learning just starts to kind of slump and deteriorate a bit. So what does this mean for us? Well, hopefully you're recognizing there's no hard or fast answer to this. It's just something we have to think about. But all those people who are really arguing for starting school later, for moving school back, say 90 minutes, now you start to see where their argument is coming from. What they're saying is if we can get teens just one more sleep cycle, we can increase their memory consolidation by almost an hour. We can almost double the time they spend in stage two sleep, which can help their memory and understanding. Unfortunately, the counter is school isn't only populated by teenagers, it's got younger kids who don't have this problem, and it's got adults like us who've got lives to lead. So we've got this real kind of struggle point. So maybe one of the best things we can do is just help teens recognize that this is an issue, that their sleep cycle is out of whack. And here's where things like routine become very important. If we can help kids shut down technology at a certain time, start to unwind at a certain time, and ideally get them in bed with lights off by 10, 10.30, they might not naturally be tired, but do that routine enough and all of a sudden they can start to move their circadian rhythm back into sync and we can ensure they're getting those eight hours they need that are really gonna support their memory during learning. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all well. I hope you learned a lot from that. And again, if you like what you've heard, if you could please just give me a like and then subscribe uh, beneath. That'll make sure more people on YouTube get a chance to see this stuff. Otherwise, I hope you're all well and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye y'all.